we wanted to talk about UE with elastic demand and how it affects the uniqueness property of the UE solution. Um, but how can we show that? Can we show uh, adding that elastic elastic demand term into the objective, how can we show that adding that elastic demand to the objective function still satisfies the uniqueness property? Um, there is an easy solution for it, and that is we only need to show that the objective function is still strictly convex. <clears throat> so previously, we knew that this objective function here was a strictly convex, right? it was, this term was a strictly convex because T was monotonically, monotonically increasing. Now that we added this new term here, we need to show that this term is also a strictly convex. So to make sure this all this term is also strictly convex, we need to assume that d minus one r s this function inside this term is actually monotonically decreasing. If d is most monotonically decreasing, as a result, d minus one is also monotonically decreasing. Okay. Um, Oh, I think I mistakenly said before that d1 is, d minus one is monotonically increasing, right? So in that, if, so look, we say summation of integral of d minus one, I previously drew it like this when I wanted to, when I wanted to explain this summation. So this is monotonically increasing while I should have drawn it monotonically decreasing, so. My mistake, um, let me just redraw this. So this term actually, because if we assume dr is monotonically de decreasing, then d minus one inverse of demand function is still monotonically decreasing as well. So it would look like this actually. So this is d minus one function. And again, it doesn't change the whole idea of taking the area underneath the curve because of that integral. But the function is actually, uh, we usually assume it's monotonically decreasing. But hey, uh, okay, it's not necessarily wrong that you say that demand function, that demand function can actually be anything, right? If, if my demand function is, instead of monotonically being decreasing, if it was exponentially increasing, instead of being like this, if it was like this, what does it mean? What does it happen? It's not the end of the world, right? You can still solve the UE problem, but the only thing that we lose is that is that uniqueness of the UE solution. So you may actually have many correct solutions and many non-unique link flows. It's not wrong, but it becomes a little bit tricky to work with because why do we need all of why do we need the why do we need why do we care about unique link flows because if i want to compare again let's look at the bigger picture if i want to compare project a versus project b imagine i'm new south wales government i want to build this road versus the other road okay if i want to come if i want to compare project a project b i need to have a solid benchmark if I run the UE and if I get many possible link flows, it would be very tricky and challenging to actually compare any other scenario with this scenario because you have many solutions. Which one is right? Which one will happen in reality? Again, there are ways to handle this challenge is you can actually get all the possible solutions or as many solutions as you can and compare all of them with the future scenario and see how on average or what is the standard deviation of changes in link flows. So yes, there are ways of handling this non-uniqueness property and looking at it from a more of a, um, we, call it, we call it a Bayesian uh, approach uh, or uh, a probabilistic approach. Um, but usually the way it works in practice is that we want to make sure we have a solid 
benchmark to work with. That's why uniqueness of the solution is very important for us. But anyway, so yes, this is not wrong, but it just lose you just we just loses the uniqueness property. So that's why we assume d is monotonically decreasing. D minus one or inverse of the demand function is also monotonically increasing. As a result, the integration of this D minus one will be a strictly concave, right? And because we have this negative sign behind it, it will make it a strictly convex, right? So if you have a concave function like this, if you multiply minus one to this function, you actually make it a convex function, right? So this minus summation of integral, so this integral itself is a strictly concave because d minus one is monotonically decreasing, but because we have that negative sign, it will make it a strictly convex. And now we have this strictly convex function plus a strictly convex function next to it. So to a strictly convex function, you sum it up, you still have a strictly convex function. So that's how we can ensure the solution of the UE with elastic demand remains unique. Uh, and it, the key is this monotonically decreasing uh, demand function. Uh, so let's have a look at that example that we had before, <clears throat> where we put together the uh, the first term and the second term of the objective function. And then if you look at the second term of the objective function, we want to check whether this was convex or concave or what. So what was the demand function? The demand function was 60 minus k. So the inverse of the demand function would be 60 minus d. Both of them are monotonically decreasing, right? But how can we check? I mean, this is an easy function. Of course, it's monotonically decreasing, decreasing because I have this negative sign next to it. So it's the slope is negative. But if you want to check whether it is convex or concave, what should we do? Uh, we take the second derivative, right? So if I take the first derivative of this with respect to d, it would be... Um, Uh, what is the first, what is the second derivative of this? Did I, uh, so the first derivative would be, um, what was the demand function actually? Let me just have a look at the demand function. It's 60 minus KRS, right? So, uh, oh, sorry, this is just a, um, yeah, this is just the um, inverse, inverse of the function. So this is just the inverse of the demand function, 60 minus D. If you also multiply this negative sign with it, it would be minus 60, right? So if you want this to be a strictly, so we need this to be a strictly convex. That means the second derivative must be uh, positive. Uh, so, um, Oh, got it, I got it. So uh, I was trying to take the derivative of D. We need to take the derivative of this whole integral. This, the, the derivative, the second derivative of the whole integral must be positive. So this term is to show that this is a convex function. This is a convex uh, term. Um, so the first, if I wanna take the derivative of this integral, what will just come out? The, the, the function D minus one inside the integral just comes out, right? So you wanna, Ter derivation of an integral is just a term inside the integral is equal to that. So derivation of that integral is just the uh, d minus one. We have the negative sign next to it. So it would be just minus 60 minus d. This was d minus one. And then if I take this, the second derivative, obviously it's just plus one. We have this negative sign next to it. So this is positive. So that means this term with the negative sign, it's, uh, convex or strictly convex. Uh, if I didn't, if I didn't put, if I didn't take into account this negative sign, what I would end up with, I didn't, I wouldn't have this negative sign here then, 
And then if I want to take the derivative, this would become as minus one and it is negative. So this term without the negative sign would be a strictly concave, but then because it, it gets multiplied by that minus one next to it, it becomes a strictly convex, as I said many, many times now. <laughs> okay, so let's actually move to the algorithm. How can we actually find the UE solution with elastic demand and in a large network without the need to do it algebraically? So the approach is going to be very similar to the previous approaches we had when we had fixed demand. Either we can go with Frank Wolf algorithm, method of successive average, for example. But we need to keep track of a new variable. So in, in addition to keep tracking of the flow variables, we need to keep track of the demand variables as well. So the way we start is we start with a feasible solution where we start with some feasible link flows and the feasible demand because now demand angles is also changing. It could be anything, right? We start with the feasible link flows and feasible demand and then we do an iterative process. We find the optimal descent direction and then for each OD pair, we determine the shortest pass and then now that we have the shortest pass K, we use the demand function which is a function of K and then we'll find a new demand and then we use this new demand which was a function of k and then we assign it to the shortest pass as all or nothing assignment and then we and then we use for example if you're going with msa uh, we use the msa formula uh, with that lambda value uh, with that lambda variable um, and then we shift flows uh, between paths and then, and then after we shift flows, we find the new link flows and then the new demand. And then we continue doing this until we reach uh, our stopping criteria. And we talk about a stopping criteria in a, in, a, in a second. So let's have a look at an example here uh, to see how we can actually adopt MSA, but with elastic demand. Uh, so imagine this network, <clears throat> we, we wanna go from A to D. This is our demand function. <clears throat> and because there is only one OD, I don't really need to have KRS because it's only one OD. And uh, let's actually apply MSA here. So um, how many passes do we have from A to D? So I have uh, this path, I have this path, and I also have this path. So I have three paths going from A to D. The top one is A, C, D. The middle one is A, B, C, D. And the bottom one is A, B, D, right? So how, how, how should we start MSA? We start with empty network. We find out what is the free flow travel time of each link. And then we find the free flow travel time of paths and then we have to do an all or nothing assignment. So at the beginning, we assume empty network is empty. So all the link flows are zero. So we calculate the link travel times given all these travel time functions that we have, the link travel time functions. Uh, so that actually means what is the, uh, let's call this path one, path two and path three. So what is the travel time of path one? Travel time of path one is summation of travel time of AC plus CD. So um, which one is one actually? So yeah, I, this is one. So I need actually four plus five. So this is actually T4 plus T5 and it's 30. So the top pass is 30. Uh, pass 2 is T1 plus T3 plus T5. So T1 plus T3 plus T5, it's 10. And path 3 is T1 plus T2. So it would be 20. Okay, so we have 30, 10, and 20. So this would be the shortest pass, right? So let me actually go to my next slide. So yeah, so 10 is my shortest pass. Uh, so this was the link travel times and link flows. And then these are my path 
information. So this is my shortest path. And what I need to do is, I need to do an all or nothing assignment now, right? But the question is with what demand? Demand is not fixed, demand is a function itself. And we have, we, we assume that it's a function of K only. So what is K here? Remember we said K is the shortest path travel time. So this 10 here is actually my K. That's the travel, that's the minimum travel time possible here up so far. So this is my K. So we say K of iteration one is 10. So now if I, if I wanna get the demand, the demand would be 20 minus 10 over four. So demand is 17.5. So I also keep track of D in addition to K. So it's 17.5. So I have, I have D. Now using this 17.5, I do an all or nothing assignment. And which path was the shortest path? This path. So I assign all this 17.5 demand to this path two. So that means link one will have 17.5, 17.5, 17.5 flows, and this would be zero, zero. So I have 17.5, zero, 17.5, zero, 17.5, right? So these are the all or nothing assignments. So basically, instead of y, I could actually say this is x star, right? So let's just stick to the, the standard notation that we've been using before. This should be x star instead of y. So let's call this x star which is my um, uh, all or nothing assignment uh, link flows. So this, this is my all or nothing AON, my all or nothing assignment link flows. And then I'm gonna use the MSA formula because this is iteration one, lambda is one. Remember lambda was one over N or lambda was one over I, if I is the number, is the iteration number. So this is iteration one, lambda is one. So what will happen is basically X one is actually X zero. So all the new link volumes are equal to whatever the, the X star, yeah, X zeros. Uh, so I have my X ones. Now that I have my X ones, let's go to the next iteration. I can update the travel times given the new link volumes, right? So I use all the link travel time functions. I update my travel times. So we update the travel time. This is classical MSA. And now I can also update my path travel times. So the first pass is now 55. The second pass is gonna be 80. And the bottom path is now 47.5. These are the travel times. And now we can see that this is now the new shortest path, right? So this is the new shortest path travel time. So this would be my K. This is my K. And now I can calculate the new demand again because demand is changing. Demand would be 20 minus 47.5 divided by four. So if you calculate that, you get to 8.12. So this would be, look, I'm keep, I keep track of K and D in addition to all the flows and travel times. So this would be my new demand. Now I'm gonna do an all or nothing assignment using this new demand that I calculated. So this is my shortest path. So all of this 8.1250 will be assigned to this path number three. So that means all of that demand, which is 8.125, go, uses this button pass. So link flows would be, a link flow of one would be 8.12, link flow linked two would be 8.12, and the rest would be zero. So this is my X star. With, when, when I do all or nothing assignment using the new demand that I get with the demand function. And now I'm gonna use MSA formula again. Lambda this time is one over two because we are at iteration two. So again, let me just change this Y to X star, just to be consistent with all the previous slides that we had. Sorry, it's a water star. Huh. It's a messy star. Um, so yeah, it would be X star. And uh, if you put, uh, so we have X, ones from before, we have X stars from all or nothing assignment, and then we can calculate the X twos. So all the new link volumes uh, are here. So we have the new link volume, so I can do another iteration, right? So I can update the travel times again. 
now that I have my new volumes, I can update the travel times given the link travel time functions, easy. Let's calculate the path costs and see which one is the shortest path. So if I use these new travel times and calculate the past travel times, I will find out that path one is now the shortest path. So this would be the this would be my K. So this would be my K. And then I can calculate D again. D would be 20 minus 35. 37.5 divided by 4. If I calculate that, that would give me 10 something. And then I need to assign this demand to the shortest path as an all or nothing assignment. So if I do that, all of this 10.6 goes to path 1. So this would be my x star. And then I use MSA formula. This is x star. Lambda is what? is 1 over 3 because we are at iteration 3. And then if I use this one, you'll see that I get my new link travel times. OK? Um, and then I can keep going. I can keep doing that, right? I can keep doing and then I until I reach convergence. But what is convergence now? So the way we stop the algorithm when we have elastic demand is we try to reach two convergence criteria. The first one is as before. Uh, we use the same methods that we had as we used with UE with fixed demand. Remember we had, for example, one, one relative gap was what? The relative, the, the relative gap definition was TSTT minus SPTT divided by SPTT, right? This was one of the convergence criteria that we had before, the relative gap. So not only this relative gap must be smaller than something, whatever threshold we want to go with, but we also need to check the equilibrium conditions with regard to the demand function at the last iteration or at any iteration we want to stop it, right? So, and this new stopping criteria that looks at the demand um, contains it 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 is con uh, it actually has two terms. So the first term looks at the inverse of the demand function using that demand value that we calculate at iteration n minus the shortest path divided by the shortest path, the cost, the cost of the shortest path, and this is summation across all ODs. Okay, summation over all ODs. And the second term looks at, so this this tries to, uh, this tries, this term, it tries to uh, see whether the travel time actually is getting closer to the minimum travel time. Look, so um, inverse of the demand function should be close to the minimum travel time. So at the equilibrium, D minus one is actually equal to the shortest pass cost. Um, and then this term would be zero at the equilibrium. But the second term, what is the second term? The second term here tries to look at iteration, consecutive iterations and how this shortest path cost changes from iteration minus one to iteration N. If if we see large changes from one iteration to another iteration in terms of the in terms of the value of the k, that suggests that we are still not at the equilibrium. What we want, what ideally we would like to see that from one iteration to another iteration, this term is also close to zero. That means, for example, if I go from iteration 10 to iteration 11, the change that I see in that k value is a small. But let's have a look at the example we had. So what was K value here? Iteration three, I had K 37.5. Iteration two, it was 47. So there's 10 difference. And there was a, even a larger difference from K1 to K2. So it changed from 10 to 24, and then from 24 to 37. So it's still, yes, a smaller from K2, K2 to K3, the change is a smaller, but it's still, it's pretty large. So if we keep doing this, uh, iterations, we'll probably see convergence in the k values as well.
right? So if I look at this, um, yeah, I talked about this, that the second term actually represents the consecutive shortest pass costs. So if I come back to that example that we had, so this was iteration one, iteration two, iteration three. And if I want to calculate the second term for it, the, this term, for example, it would be, um, it would be K2 minus K1 divided by K2. Remember it's K, K, it's KN minus KN minus one divided by KN, okay? Don't make a mistake that in, on the denominator, it shouldn't be N minus one, it is KN. So it would be 47 minus 10 divided by 47, it's 78%, that's super large. From iterate, so that was iteration one to iteration two. From iteration two to iteration three, I have K3 minus K2 divided by K3. So it's 37 minus 47 divided by 37. It's 26. Yes, it's got smaller, but it is still uh, too large. Uh, and that actually means we need to keep going a few other iterations or maybe a, a lot more iterations until we reach uh, convergence. Um, let me, I didn't talk about this part. I want to actually show it to you uh, in an Excel calculation. So if you all agree, I'm gonna recap, I'm gonna go over this example again, but I'm gonna do it in Excel. So let's actually start <clears throat> doing the iteration. So iteration number one. Uh, let's go with uh, link flows and travel time. So I'm gonna have X and T uh and uh let me also add another column next to it so i know this is the link number link one two three four five links i have right and uh, uh i start with uh empty network uh, and then what is my link travel times so t1 is actually two multiply x1 uh, T2 is 20 plus X2. Uh, T3 is 10 plus X3. T4 is 30 plus X4. And 5 is actually equal to X5. So these are my uh, link travel times, right? So let me just say links. So this would be my link travel time. Let me also do the paths. So uh, I want to go over paths. So let's call it pass one, two, three. Uh, pass one was the top one, right? A, C, D, let's call it. Uh, the middle one was pass two, A, B, C, D, and the bottom one was A, B, D. Uh, and uh, I want to have the travel time of the path. I want to calculate the travel time of the path. What is the travel time of path, the top path? It would be T4 plus T5. So I just need to simply say T4 plus T5. Path two would be T1, T3, and T4. So, sorry, it would be T1 plus T3 plus T5. And then the bottom path would be um, T1 plus T2. T1 plus T2. So these are my uh, path travel times. And as we saw in the example, this came out to be the shortest path, right? So now what I can do is I can, um, um, do an all or nothing assignment, right? So how about I say X a star here. Uh, let me also just color this differently so I know later. So how about I calculate X a star now, which is the all or nothing assignment, right? So uh, let me just right next to it, all or nothing assignment. So I'm gonna, um, oh, I need to also to keep track of K and D, right? So what is K, what is D? Um, K here is actually equal to 10, right? That's the shortest path. And what is D? D is 20 minus K over four. This divided four, that's my uh, demand function, right? 
So that is my K and D. So I have my K and D. Now let's do all or nothing assignment using the demand, this demand. So everything will go to pass two. So T1 would be equal to the 17.5. T2 would be zero. T3 is equal to this 17.5. T4 would be zero and T5 is actually equal to this 17.5, right? If I've made any mistake because I'm doing this on the fly, someone correct me if I, if you see any mistake, uh, just let me know, okay? So I have my X star now and uh, this was my X zero, let's call it. And let's now get my X ones. I need to get my x1. And because we are at iteration one, um, x1 is actually, um, let me actually put it next to it. x1 is actually equal to uh, x star in this case because we are at iteration one and lambda is one, right? So that is my, um, Uh, what's wrong with this? Uh, that's okay. So this is my X1. Uh, now that I have X1, what I can do is, actually, let me take this to the, yeah, let me give it a, yeah, that's okay. Uh, I can, I wanted to actually, I can, I can repeat it here. So let's now go to iteration two. Mm. Let me fix this formulas for a second and then. Okay. So now I have my, uh, that was iteration one. Um, here, now I'm gonna go to iteration two. So I need to update, I have some new uh, link volumes, right? I can update the path uh, travel times. So let's do that. Um, oh, sorry, I think I need to, you, okay, if I want to copy formulas, let me be a little bit smart. Uh, let me just uh, copy these. So if I want to copy things, I don't want to rewrite the, um, Clear content, uh, I'll fill and no borders here. So, okay, so that's my X1. Okay, I wanted to be make sure I'm consistent in terms of the, uh, how the tables look like. So if I wanna copy this to here, it will actually capture the right formula, yes. So now I'm gonna have my travel times. So let's also call that T0. Now let's call this T1, uh, same thing with, uh, this one doesn't matter. Uh, so travel times, let me also just copy this because it's the same travel time functions as before. There you go, that's what I wanted to do. So I have my link travel time functions. Let me just double check if it's correct. Uh, yes, that's two multiply the flows, fine. I have my path travel times. I already put the formulas before, so uh, I get that correctly here. And now I just need to change this manually. Uh, if it was a computer code, so look, the problem with Excel is there needs to be a lot of manual work as well. If I, if I could code this in MATLAB or Python or any other programming language, it would be a lot more seamless than uh, what I'm doing now. But anyways, which one would be the shortest path? This is now the shortest path. So now what would be my... Um, Now, what would be my new K and D? So my K, I have to manually change this to 45, 4, and 7, but then the formula for D is correct. It's the demand function that we had in the, it's 20 minus uh, K over four. So that is um, okay. And now I need to do another all or nothing assignment, right? So let me just copy all of this here. And then let me 
update these. So I need to manually fix this because my new all or nothing assignments actually changes. So now that path number one is the shortest pass, all of this demand here, eight point, let me make it bold. All of this demand uh, should go to um, the shortest path. So it's, and it is path one. So T1 would be zero, T2 would be zero, T3 would be zero, and T4 would be equal to this 8.125, and this one also would be equal to that, okay? So far, so good. Um, I need to have uh, MSA formula here. So I could have done the MSA formula at the beginning as well. So if I copy the MSA formula would also copy here as well, but uh, let me do it now. So what was the MSA formula? MSA formula was saying, um, I need to cheat. So to see what was the MSA formula, it's X zero plus, it's actually X one. Let me put the MSA formula in the first iteration as well. And then I'll, uh, so let me bring up, bring in the for MSA formula for you. So you, so you can actually, uh, sorry, MSA formula here. So let me actually fix this MSA formula here as well. So it would be X zero plus one over N, which is the iteration number. I'm gonna select the iteration number here, multiply by X star, which is D three minus X zero. So this should give me the, let me just make sure everything is correct here. Uh, yes, it is correct. So that should, and let me just make sure I put some, this should be fixed here. So I put some dollar values here. So this doesn't change. Let me just quickly, yes, it's all good. So it's still one over iteration number. Uh, and then I have X zero here and X star here. And okay, cool, this is good. So now let me also fix this. I need to just say iteration and this is number two here. So it will also follows the same formula. And if I get the same formula, copy it here to get the X two values. Yes, uh, did I do it right? just the iteration number should be fixed, sorry. Yes, cool, there you go. So I have the iteration number, I have X1, X star, and then I get my new uh, X values, right? So now, again, the whole reason I'm doing this in Excel is not only to do a little bit of practice here, but I wanted to also show you how to calculate that convergence criteria uh, for the demand, okay? So let's do it here. So uh, let me also bring the, the, the formula, the convergence formula here. I don't do the TSDT, PS, uh, shortest pass convergence here. You can do it on your own, but let me just take the, uh, the demand convergence criteria. Uh, let me just put it here, yes. Um, cool. I don't need the MSA formula anymore, so let me just get rid of that. And let me call this, what should I call it? Um, converge, let's call it D and then converge K. I mean, I'm like, this is the first term, this is the second term, for example. And let's see, what is that D minus one? So that D minus one is actually the inverse of the demand function, right? So D minus one, let's call it. And what would be the inverse of the demand function? It would be 20 minus some kind of a demand divided by four, but what demand? That's the tricky port, uh, point here. That's the tricky part here. You need to calculate something called the actual demand in the network. So let me actually write it here. So actual demand, in the network. What is actually, how can I get the actual demand that is running in the network at the end of this iteration too? That is by looking at, remember, look, remember the conservation of the demand formula, which we said uh, any demand that comes out of, let me see if I can write here, yes. Um, so this is called X4 and X1. So X4, 
plus x1 is actually equal to the demand that is running into the network, right? So let's actually see what is that here. So it would be x4 plus x1. So x1 plus x4. It's 12.81. Interesting, right? So you see, uh, when I apply the MSA, because we are doing, we are shifting link flows, et cetera, et cetera, and demand is not fixed, you can actually, we have this new notion of actual demand running in the network, and we can easily calculate it by this conservation of uh, demand and flows concept. So when I get these X2 values, I can easily see that, oh, the actual demand that is running into the network, given this new uh, link value, link volume values is actually 12.81. And that is the demand that I need to use in the calculation of this first time in the convergence criteria. So let me do it. So uh, yes, let me just first get the inverse of the demand function. It would be 20 minus this D divided by four. Okay, so that's 16 point something. And now if I want to calculate the first term, it's the absolute value. Again, remember this is the absolute value. We don't want a negative or positive thing. So it would be, oops, uh, it would be uh, ABS absolute value of this D minus one, this inverse of the demand minus K divided by K. That is 64%. Okay. Oh, what did I do? Sorry. Uh, home. I want to just make it as a percentage. So, and let's calculate convergence of K. It would be also the absolute value of Kn minus the K from the previous iteration divided by which K? Kn or Kn minus 1? Kn divided by this K. And let's also make this a percentage. So let's, and then if I go back to the slides, just to double check, I did everything correctly. The values that we calculated was 78.95%. Yes, so this is right. Uh, so this is how we calculate the convergence. Let me maybe make it orange. And you can see that it is still too large, right? So let's do another iteration so you can actually see how the actual demand and stuff like that can get calculated again. So lucky that I have all the formulations correct. So let me just um, copy everything. Uh, you see, that's the manual part that I don't like about Excel. Uh, yes, you don't have to code, but you have to do a lot of manual work. If I was a, you may spend a little bit more time coding this, but then whenever you want to run it, it's just in a fraction of a second. But every time if I want to do this in Excel, it takes a long time. But anyways, it's just for practice so you learn. It doesn't matter. Um, so that is iteration three. Uh, this should be X2 now. Uh, let me also get the path. Let me also get all of the formulas here as well. I need them. OK. Uh, so let's make sure everything gets correct. So this is X2, that is fine. Um, I now calculate, now I can update the travel time. So this is T2 now. T2, the travel times are updated. So now that the travel time, link travel times are updated, I need to, oops, if I move this, okay. <laughs> if I move this, I, the text remains here. So let me just, Oh, I don't want to delete this. No, let me just delete these uh, writings that I had here. Oh, that was easy. Good. Um, so I think I just need to update the path, the shortest path. So the calculation of the shortest passes is still correct. Which one is the shortest path? This one is now the new shortest path. So I need to manually specify that for myself. Um, so no fill. So this is the new shortest path. And now if I want to do an all or nothing assignment, where's my network? Um, if I want to do all or nothing assignment, the bottom pass is the shortest path. So all of this, let me check the demand. Let me just, oh, oh yeah, K should also be updated. This K, I have to manually update it to this new shortest path. 
to be honest, what I could do is instead of having this, I could say minimum of all of these. Yay, that's better. Then I have a formula for it. Minimum of all of these three travel time. That would give me the, I don't have to manually change it. Uh, yes, there was a question. What's the formula for D? Uh, that's the inverse of the demand function. I'll show it to you. Um, just let me show it to you. So look, it's the it's just the inverse of this. Uh, the, I have this demand function. So the inverse of that would be 20 minus D over four. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. Uh, okay, so what else I have here? Uh, so I updated the path. Uh, let me see if the D is correct. D is correct, but I need to update these uh, all or nothing assignment, right? I have to manually do that. So now that the bottom pass is the shortest path, um, that means T1 and that means X1 and X2. So um, uh, this would be zero, zero, and X1 would be equal to the demand and x2 is actually equal to the demand as well. Sorry, let me full screen so you see that is ah uh, is that correct? Yes. And what about the MSA formula? Let me just make sure I fix the iteration number as well here. Iteration don't Yep, so this is now correct. That's the MSA formula taking one over three, then the iteration number. So I have my, and then let's call this X3 because that's at the end of iteration three. And now I can actually calculate a new demand, right? So the new demand is still is X4 plus X1. So I don't need to update anything. That is the actual demand that is running into the network given these link flows. Right, so let me also maybe make these a little bit green here so you better see. Yep, any question so far? Yes, there is. Why don't we just use mean f function for calculate the k value for each path? Uh, what? Oh, okay, I have to manually change this because later on I have to do this all or nothing assignment manually. Um, again, if you think a little bit more, maybe we can find another smart way to do it automatically. But for now, I can't think of any other way of doing it in Excel unless I write a my macro. Uh, but look, K is the minimum as well. I'd say K is the minimum of this, but then which path is the shortest path? I have to manually uh, find it. Yes, I did that. Uh, would the inverse of D would 80 over 4D? Why 80? Sorry. Uh, let me just do again, going back to that inf curve. Let's take the inverse of the demand. Sure. It's D20 minus K4. So it's 4D equal to 20 minus K. K is equal to 20 minus 4D. No. It's actually 20 minus 4D. Oh, sorry. Yes. No. What did I do? Um, uh, what did I do? I think I did it wrong, right? So the inverse function is not that. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. So D minus, so I just take the K out. So, uh, sorry, not this one. No, 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 no. Let's do it again. 20 minus D over, sorry, uh, what am I doing? Uh, let me just do it again. D is 20 minus K over four. So I said D minus 20 is equal to this, right? So 40 gets multiplied by that. It's four D minus 20. So minus comes here, K. Yes, you were right. D minus one is actually 80 minus 4D. 
Yes, 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 you're right. Um, yes. So let me fix my uh, D minus one formula. Thank you for pointing that out. So it would be actually a t minus four multiplied by this d. D is that actual demand, okay? Um, okay, everything else remains the same because this is just a convergence, right? Yes, okay, cool. Um, let me also erase this. So let's also check the convergence. Let's see what happened. So you can see that convergence of the first term, the first, uh, the first term in the, let me, if I bring this formula here, uh, other than checking the regular convergence criteria, the relative gap, et cetera, et cetera, uh, if I check the convergence of the demand, the first term is actually going down to, has gone down to 16%, the convergence of K has also gone down to 27%, and then, Look, the formula is actually the summation of them. So let's actually do that summation. So summation should be a smaller than, so if I say sum converge, uh, just an arbitrary name, is actually this plus this. Obviously this could go above 100% because each of those terms, look here is on above 100%, which is fine. Uh, and now if my stopping criteria is that if this, that epsilon, this epsilon here, this epsilon I can assume it's, I don't know, like 5%. If this is a smaller than 5%, I'm gonna stop. Um, but for now, uh, let's do another iteration if everyone agrees. Uh, and uh, let's see how the, uh, are we improving the convergence of numbers or not? So yes, so this would be iteration number four. Uh, this would be my X3, this would be T3, and this would be X4. Uh, this is now the shortest pass. I need to update that. I don't worry about this one anymore. This is no longer the shortest path. So I need to update this X stars. Um, uh, yeah, let me just skip the zeros. Uh, so the shortest path is actually the top one. So all of this demand, 9.68, should go to the top one, which is T4 and T5. So it would be uh, this. This is equal to that. The rest is zero, zero. Uh, X4, I also need to fix this. I don't, I think if I, I put an extra dollar value um, in the MSA formula, that's why I need to fix it manually every time. Uh, but anyway, so that is one over four, the MSA formula. Let me also update them. Did I do, did I update this correctly? Yes, cool. So now the actual demand is something else. It's changed. And look, the convergence criteria is keep coming, the convergence values, that percentage, that whole thing is coming down, which is nice, right? So uh, let me do another iteration because I wanna, I wanna plot the convergence plot for you, the convergence gra graph. Uh, let me do another iteration five here. Uh, so this is X4, this is T4, and this is gonna be X5. Uh, this is now the shortest path. Again, you see, I'm doing all of this to, uh, I mean, all, I use all these colors for the sake of uh, making it easier to follow, but you can just, just follow whatever easy format you wanna do you know, uh, in your assignment or final exam or whatever. Um, let's also update the uh, all or nothing assignment. So it's gonna be the bottom pass. So it's T1 and T2. So it would be, this equal hi my son is again here hello let me just finish this what's what's going what's going on uh, you want to show it to everybody okay i'll come i'll come play with you in a minute okay not in a minute in a few minutes <laughs>
برو کلاس هم که تموم شد میام جست گیو می ا سکند گایز Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, uh, where were we? Uh, so I did the all or nothing assignment, right? That is correct. That is the bottom path. And um, uh, let me see if, oh yeah, sorry. The MSA formula needs to be updated here. I, again, you don't have to do that. So if you fix, if you use the correct formula. Um, Let me just check everything is correct. Everything seems correct. The summation of convergence goes down. Okay, look, that is nice. So now if I plot, so if I if I put this together, iteration, um, iteration, one, two, three, four, five, and then if I convergence, um, I had this, then I had this, then I had this, then I had this. Sorry, the first iteration, uh, it, it everything starts from the second iteration. So, oops, what did I do? Okay, ah, let me just change this. Uh, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's nice, that's better. Iteration one is, you know, for iteration one, we don't have, we need to have two consecutive iterations to calculate the convergence, right? So this would be the graph. Um, <clears throat> what? Sorry, let's do this. Yes, yes. So x-axis is my, um, x-axis is my iteration number. So this is, uh, Iterations and y axis is my um, 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 what should I call it? Um, convergence. Actually, let's call it like a gap or demand gap or uh, let's call it gap for now. Um, so, yeah, this is my convert. And if I do another iteration, let's do another iteration because I want to show you. You see how convergence is start, it slows down a little bit? It, You see how, fa how how rapidly it goes down, but then gradually it becomes a little bit slow. So as we do more iterations, yes, we are getting closer to equilibrium, but at the same time, convergence becomes a bit slow as well. Um, so if I do another iteration, so this is going to be six now. And if I fix the uh, iteration number, And if I fix the all or nothing assignment again, I think this is now the shortest path. And this won't be the shortest path anymore. And so now the the, the, the middle path is the, so if I bring the network here, so it would be link one, three, and five. So link one would be equal to the demand, link two is zero, link Three is equal to this. A uh, link four is zero, and link five is actually equal to this. And then I actually have the uh, actual demand as well, right? Uh, yes, that is right. So let's have a look at the new uh, convergence number. It's five percent. Nice. You're getting close. To, I think I had 5% as my threshold, right? So there you go. I can now stop the algorithm because I set my epsilon, my threshold to 5%. And yep, we reached convergence. There you go.